episode of The Design Tourist, I travel to Regensburg, Germany, a UNESCO World Heritage Site to explore the link between the city's culture and creativity through its architecture, art, and handicrafts. We'll shop the city's main artisan stores and regional handicrafts at its famous Christmas markets and learn about the history and heritage of Regensburg. But first, a quick geography lesson. Regensburg is located in southeast Germany on the Danube, one of Europe's largest rivers. This city of 150,000 people is the fourth largest in the state of Bavaria and an easy drive from Germany's more popular tourist destinations, including Munich, Nuremberg, and Frankfurt. My hotel is located a block from St. Peter's Cathedral and a short walk to the medieval center of the city, concentrated with historic buildings that earned its designation as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I met up with my guide, Crystal. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> I'm your guide for the next hours to okay. show you around. Great. So I hear that uh, Regensburg is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That's the true. entire city, right? Yes, most of the city because it was not destroyed during World War II. So we have more than 1,000 authentic, authentic houses in town. And we call it the medieval wonder? That's it. Yes, because it's rare in Germany, of course. Regensburg was the capital of Bavaria from about 530 AD to the first half of the 13th century. Its cityscape is defined by 11th to 13th century architecture while under control of the Holy Roman Empire. The city prospered as an important trading center, leaving intact an architectural legacy of Roman, Romanesque, and Gothic buildings, including monasteries, churches, and patrician towers built by merchants to show off their wealth and power. We begin our day with a visit to the iconic St. Peter's Cathedral. Construction started on St. Peter's Cathedral in 1260 and lasted 600 years. Inside, Large stained glass windows illustrate the stories of saints as a visual education for those medieval churchgoers who couldn't read or understand the Latin Mass. On Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Mass, the world-famous Boys Choir performs, accompanied by one of the world's largest hanging organs. They are known as the Cathedral Sparrows, and for more than a thousand years, these boys have been performing together in the cathedral. To hear them sing stirs the soul. For me, it was a moving experience on this Sunday morning as their ethereal voices permeate outside the cathedral into the streets of the city. A 12th century stone bridge connects the city crossing the Danube River, once the front line of the expanding Roman Empire. Regensburg was founded in 179 AD by the Romans as a military camp. I want to understand the soul of Regensburg through its heritage of craft and creativity, so I asked my guide Crystal to take me shopping. Our first stop is to visit the world-famous hat maker known as the Hat King, Europe's only master hat maker. The hat maker is famous not only for that, but very famous now because he created the cylinder for Johnny Depp for Alice in Wonderland, the Disney movie. Wow. So he is known worldwide as a master hat maker for men and women's hats? That's it, yes. And a lot of presidents in former times, uh, well, all the noble people go there, our Princess Gloria, the Pope, and so on. We get an up-close look at the hat maker's claim to fame, the iconic top hat worn by actor Johnny Depp. So this is a copy of the top hat that was in Alice in Wonderland? Yes. That Johnny Depp wore. So downstairs are, are this the men's hats? Men's hats. Upstairs, Upstairs are the women's hats? Yes. Let's go try on some hats. Okay. Is this a barbar bar barbarian style hat? hat? What do you think? Good. Yeah? Where's you your can hat? Wear every hat? Wait, we have to find you a hat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna find you a hat. Oh, this one's fun. This is what you get to wear. Come yes, here. The little print. There we go. All right, look in the mirror with me. Oh, aren't we a pair? 
Hat maker Andreas Neslin uses old world techniques to handcraft each hat as a work of art. We spend some time trying on his mind blowing selection of hats, spanning two floors in all styles, from modern to traditional Bavarian looks. It's cold enough for this. That's, that's good. <laughs> Next, we head out for some soap shopping. Crystal knows of a shop that makes soaps by hand in thousands of creative designs and fragrances. Do you make the soap? Yes. You um, make the yeah, soap? Okay, the red wine is my kind of soap. <laughs> this, is, this is my kind. I can <laughs> lather it and then oh, soak okay. up the red wine. Grapefruit orange, country pear. Um, this is cornflower. This is especially for me. This is strawberry rhubarb. It looks like little candies. Yeah. I didn't know any better. I might eat it. All I need is a coffee soap to go with it. So many homemade soaps to select from. It was a tough choice, but I decided on the red wine handmade soap. As we shop the medieval streets of Regensburg, we pause to admire Millionaire's Row, a street that was once considered the most expensive real estate in the Middle Ages. Each mansion had a high tower, a private chapel, a closable courtyard, a ballroom on the first floor, and a private well, so their own water in the courtyard. So very luxury houses for that time. We stopped for lunch at the historic Sausage Kitchen, the world's oldest sausage kitchen built in the 12th century to feed workers constructing the Danube River Bridge. Today, you can still enjoy the original menu of handmade sausages and sauerkraut known as knackers. These are small brown sausages made with pork neck and served on traditional buns with a locally made mustard, a delicious, sweet, spicy condiment. So after lunch, Crystal says she's going to take me to the source of that mustard. They produce this special mustard since 104 years already. So this is a typical mustard yes. of Regensburg. And I had this at lunch at the oldest sausage restaurant. I, I loved it. It's a little sweet a little and sweet. spicy. The company started locally with a small mustard factory, and today they export all over the world. Regensburg's culinary claims to fame also include coffee and chocolate, originating as delicacies for dignitaries. From 1663 to 1806, the Perpetual Imperial Assembly met in Regensburg in the Old Town Hall, bringing wealth and power to the city. Café Princess is the oldest coffee house in Germany and the longest existing chocolatier. It opened in 1676 when it started making pralines for international ambassadors to the Imperial Assembly. You can still order these pralines today. So he told me that they need sometimes two days to finish one chocolate. Two days to finish yes. one chocolate? And that is why one little chocolate, they weigh it, and normally it costs around two euros, one little chocolate. Wow. But if you consider the time they need to finish it. As an important trading center for Europe during the Middle Ages, Regensburg was home to prosperous spice merchants whose legacies resonate today in the exotic smells of this spice store. I want to make mulled German wine that the Christmas market serve. It's a local drink made with a special spice mix, so we go shopping for it. So this is the people do, right? This is the secret yeah. ingredient. Yeah, because it's not only wine, you need spices. Spices. Oh. Mm, yes, I need to buy some Glühwein spice to bring back. to bring back some Glühwein spice. This is the secret ingredient to make the mulled German wine. Yes. Up, oh, 26, so I can add a little more. And the recommendation is a teaspoon of the seasoning with 100 grams of sugar on a liter of red wine, uh, red wine. but you can uh, use, of course, more or less. It's up to your own taste. Okay, great. Thank you for the recipe. So I got the secret ingredient and the secret recipe. <laughs> As night falls, we head to the Christmas market, crossing the Danube River Bridge. 
It's a week before Christmas, and the entire city of Regensburg lights up at night with the traditional Christmas markets. So I'm entering the romantic Christmas market. It is the largest Christmas market here in Regensburg, and it's on the grounds of the Palace, Thern, and Taxis. It gets very crowded at night as locals and tourists come out to shop and sip hot German spiced wine, that glue vine that I told you about while shopping for spices. All right, Santa Claus is hat. Let's do our ho! Each night, an angel appears on the balcony overlooking the palace courtyard, greeting the crowds at the romantic Christmas market with trumpets, stories, and songs. Regensburg's Bavarian roots are evident in craft and cuisine. The city's Christmas markets are the perfect places to experience both. So next, we head to a market known for its regional handmade crafts and products. We are here on the Lucrezia Market, one of our four Christmas markets here in town. And this is a special one because here we get only handmade things out of wool, of glass, of wood, and so on. All right, let's continue on. Silver. Silver. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. We will have a look at these glass things which are typical for our uh, district, for our region, because we have a very old tradition in the Bavarian forest. So, Karen, I want to show you these Bavarian pizzas you see here. So that's a speciality served only during Christmas time here. Oh. Hey. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. All right, let's taste it. You like it? Mm. Oh, I'm liking it. Yeah. <laughs> All the Bavarians make good pizza, you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next morning, I head out on my own to learn more about Regensburg's Bavarian roots. If you're planning a visit to Regensburg, I highly recommend that you start off your trip with a visit here to the new Bavarian History Museum. It's a great way to get a sense of the history and the culture so you can really appreciate everything you're going to see in this UNESCO World Heritage City. Now, right now there is a temporary exhibition going on, 100 treasures from a thousand years, and I'm going to go check it out. The museum traces Bavaria's path to becoming a modern state with cultural artifacts expressing Bavaria's different dialects and diverse customs. So as my travels throughout Germany at Christmas time come to a close, what a perfect way to return home than here at the Munich airport. The airport has its own Christmas market and it is the first to open and the last to close in Germany, running through December 29th, featuring 450 Christmas trees and 40 stalls. Hi, Karen. Hi. Hey, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet Welcome you. at Munich Airport. Thank you. I would love to take you around on our Christmas market here. Great. Right? Yeah. So why a Christmas market in an airport? Actually, we don't even have Christmas markets alone. We have um, alternating um, events at Munich Airport. Uh -huh. We're trying to be a little more than an airport, be a destination. And you know that Christmas markets are is, is a German tradition, so we thought we wanted, wanted to have um, a Christmas market, a traditional Christmas market right in the airport to invite the locals, the employees, and our passengers to join in and celebrate the Christmas holidays with us. The Christmas market is in the Munich Airport Center in the front of the terminal. It's Germany's largest open-air roofed forum and it's open to the public and traveling passengers. Karen, we have all different kinds of stands here at booths and this is a pretty nice one with the original wood carvings. Oh, nice. Look at this. During the Christmas market, you can shop for authentic handmade items, sample regional cuisine, sip, glue vine, and even ice skate. So, one of our highlights, the ice skating rink here. As you can see, it's already pretty good frequented by, by kids from the area, from the towns around here. Um, 
and you can even rent skates. So if you don't bring your own own skates, you can rent skates per hour, and you can try it out while you're on a stop over here. Well, do you mind if I have a go around no, in the great. ice ring? You okay. want to try it? I you're do. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I have my glue vine I'm warmed up. I'm gonna go ice skating. Cool. Let's do it. The Munich airport wants air travel to be a pleasant, entertaining, and creative experience that begins or ends your vacation with a smile. Most people think of airports as something they have to get through to get going, but I've got to say, the Munich airport was a memorable part of my travel experience in Germany. Until the design tourist travels again, stay tuned and stay inspired.